Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to talk about retrocalcaneal bursitis. I managed to say it. And that's bursitis that you get on the back of your heel, behind the Achilles tendon. It's quite a common cause for pain on that posterior part of the heel, and you'll usually see a little bit of puffiness there as well. So, for those of you who know, don't know me, my name is Mareka. I'm one of the physiotherapists from uh, treatmyachilles.com where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of, our, of this video if you want to link to our website. Okay, so the bursa is a fluid-filled sac that you get between your heel bone and your Achilles tendon. So if you can look at the picture there, if you, it's the picture of your foot and then you've got your leg coming up, you've got the Achilles tendon, and then between the heel bone and the Achilles tendon, you can see the bursa. So if we look at the just that bit blown up, you can see the bursa is drawn in there as a blue little sack. Now, that little sack, you get bursas all over in the body. They're always between tendons, um, either where tendons are close together or where a tendon is close to a bone. And their job is to prevent friction and absorb a little bit of compression. So they're protecting the tendons. Now, if that force becomes excessive, that can cause that bursa to become sore and painful. Actually, there's more than one cause. So um, let's differential diagnosis. So there's three main things that can cause the bursa to be um, sore and tender and swell up. The first will be if you've got an inflammatory reaction or inflammatory conditions. So for instance, gout can cause that. Conditions like rheumatoid arthritis can cause that. But any other um, inflammatory type disease can cause a retrocalcaneal bursitis to develop. So that's one thing. If you know that you, you have something like that in your family, it's worth testing with for and asking the doc. Then the next one is trauma. So if you get a direct knock and um, on that bursa, it can puff up dramatically and be super, super painful. And then thirdly, and this is probably one of the most common ways that I see people who's got bursitis is when it's chronic overuse and an acute increase on compressive forces um, on that bursa. So if we think of how the bursa works, this is your foot, this is your leg, Achilles tendon comes there, bursa lies on there to protect the tendon. Can you see as you run and walk and you come over there, there's compression on there. Now that's absolutely normal but it's when it's an excessive force or a lot of compression really quite frequently that the bursa can get irritated because it's just not used to that. Um, compression in itself is not the problem, it's how much compression. Now, what can lead to overload with compression forces? It can be if you suddenly switch from always wearing shoes with a slight heel to shoes that's really, really flat or walking in bare feet. Now, walking in bare feet in the house may not be a problem, but say, for instance, you go on holiday and most of your life in the UK, you spend in shoes and shoes with a heel. And now you're on holiday, flip flops, barefoot on the, or barefoot on the beach and you're walking miles. So you're going, oh, it's so nice to walk barefoot on the beach. Let's go walk a long distance. So the sand's causing it to, um, to tilt in more for your heel to drop more than usual. So you're getting an increase in compression force, which is not used to, or you're walking quite a long way in flip-flops, so short period, not an issue. Long period, too much because it's not used to it, and that makes it flare up. Other things is if you suddenly take up hill running or hill walking, and especially fast walking up a hill, because going up a hill will increase that angle, increase the pull of the Achilles tendon over the bone, and increase the compression on the, um, on the bursa. What else? Oh yes, a very common one is overstretching. So if we think of the typical calf stretch and especially deep stretches in yoga, like really dipping into the downward dog and getting that heel down. If you're too severe with it and you're not very careful with how you do it and how you ease into it over time, that can actually be enough to flare it up. So what can you do about it? Well, first of all, if you know that you are prone to inflammatory disease, it's worth testing it because anti-inflammatories can make a massive difference if you have an inflammatory condition in your body to get the inflammation down. But it's worth checking with your GP because not everybody is okay with anti-inflammatories. So you need to make sure that you take medication that's safe for you. 
Um, even in cases where it's not due to inflammatory disease, anti-inflammatories may be useful, but it wouldn't necessarily be my first port of call. I would do a few of the other things first. The second thing, and this is probably the most important one to start doing immediately, is to offload that bursa. So just give it a little bit of space, give it a little bit of breathing, um, breathing um, space that it can calm down. And by far the easiest way to do is just put a shoe on with a heel, but not a heel that presses onto it. So make sure your shoe doesn't press directly onto that area, but anything that lifts it up. So if we think of the foot again, in this position, certain amount of compression there, can you see if I lift my heel up, I'm gonna ease off on how much that Achilles tendon pulls over the heel, and we're gonna ease the pressure on the bursa. So what my patients find useful is they may, have to wear shoes with a slight heel on all day long in the house, or even put an extra heel lift in there that they're in a more of a plantar flex position. If it's a mild case, don't have to wear it in the house, but just when they go for longer walks. So it depends on how sensitive yours is. But if when it happens, you can immediately offload it and give it a little bit of breathing space to take the pressure off it, and you're quite severe with it for a few days that you're really protected, you'll see that it calms down much more quickly than if you try to brave it and just keep on walking in flat things. That will work for ones where you've got a direct trauma as well, because again, it just needs to be offloaded for a while because the body will repair it, it just needs time. And we're not talking about a few days, it can take a few weeks for it to properly calm down. Um, then, if we think of training and things like that, how can we offload it through that? Stick to flat. So avoid the hills or just don't walk that fast. So go for strolls rather than fast walks. If you can run without pain on the flat, stick to the flat. Stick to slower running probably than faster running. And if we think of running shoes, again, choose one with a heel drop. So if you usually train in flats, you may have to either get a heel lift temporarily put them in both shoes though otherwise you're going to be uneven that you can take out again or if you do have trainers with a heel that could really help just check because I have had patients where it was actually the pressure of a shoe that they wore that was really tight on that heel that caused the compression and the irritation of the bursa so check that your shoes doesn't don't press directly on that um and then one of the most important things, and this is quite shocking because when I look on the internet, I see people prescribing calf stretches and dorsiflexion stretches for bursitis. Please do not stretch your calf or your Achilles tendon or into dorsiflexion if you have a bursitis because it's increased compression of that bursa that's caused the irritation. You're not going to get it better through increasing that even more. Now I know why people do it because the calf feels tight and they, they think if I can release the calf it will release the pressure and then the bursa will be happy. That calf is tight because you've got pain in your heel and that calf will stay tight until the pain in the heel settles down. It won't settle down the tightness unless you can fix this bit and if you're going to continue to stretch you're going to continue pushing on this irritated structure at the bottom and it's not going to settle down. If you want to do something for your calf that's tight, you can use a massage gun on it, obviously not on the heel that's sore, but on the muscle by all means. You can foam roll, you can get a massage. Again, don't let anybody rub into that bursa or anything, they'll just make it worse because rubbing and massaging on the bursa is again compression. Okay, um, yeah, that's basically it. So if however, sometimes you get ones that's really resistant to treatment, so you're really offloading it um, and you've done that for sev several weeks. Your physio feel that you've done it properly for long enough. You've tried to avoid all positions and activities that really aggravates it. And you've also gone to the doc and had your anti-inflammatories in for a short period of time. Remember, it's only five to 10 days ever for that type of thing. Um, and it's not made a difference. Then you could get uh, injection into the bursa as well. Now, it is usually a steroid injection that they use for that. And I would say, if you're gonna have that, make sure they do it under ultrasound guidance because you want that injection to go into the bursa. 
So they have to look at where they inject. Because remember, corticosteroid is not good for tendons. So if you're going to inject it directly into the tendon, you could place yourself at higher risk of getting a tendon rupture. Also, the reason um, corticosteroid works really well to calm the bursa down, but the reason I'm leaving it for last is because even though you injecting it directly into the bursa, not the tendon, they are so close together that some of that, that corticosteroid will mix and go to the tendon. So you will still have a little bit of an effect there. Now, corticosteroid doesn't mean that you will snap your tendon. It just isn't that great for tendon health. So yes, if you've got a persistent bursitis that doesn't want to react to anything else, I would say have one, but make sure you have offloaded it properly and you've done everything else properly before you get that. Now you may ask about exercise. What exercises should you do be, to fix this? To be honest, there's not any, you don't need strength training or anything for this because this is not a strength deficit that you've got in there. It's a compression thing. So it's more about avoiding the compression and slowly easing back into those positions over time. However, it can often come in combination with the insertional Achilles tendinopathy. In that case, you will have to do exercises for the tendinopathy to get that stronger and get that better. But honestly, get some guidance from a physio about this because you want to limit the range that you do your exercises in so that you don't cause more compression there. So there's not a one size fits all with that. It's got to be something that works for you and for your specific case. So let me know if you've got any questions. And remember, if you need more help with your Achilles injury, you're welcome to consult one of us via video call. Link to the website is in the description of this video. Take care.